I finally figured out how to open my tailgate consistently. Oh, hello everybody. Welcome to day one of Wood Stove Rock Surround. I brought this doomahickey out just in case. Again, this panic of bring something out just in case I could bring it down and then it's there and then it's ready and then I don't have to bring it out the next time. But I don't know if I have time today. I didn't decide I was coming out here until 9.30 this morning. We had other plans, but Steve had surgery on his knee two days ago and feels like he needs a little bit more time to rest it. So we changed our plans this morning and I decided to come out here and at least start it. So I have a few things to take down there. I obviously can't get everything done today. Um, it's like 12, it's after 12 p.m. now. It just takes that long to kind of get organized. I had to stop the hardware store and get some stuff. I actually tried to get two. I, I bought this one at a different store. This is the permabase or the cement board. And then the hardware store that I stopped at today didn't have the same stuff. And I was like, uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. It probably makes no difference, but I thought I'll just stick with what I've got for now. And it's not quite enough. This one three by five, I need a little bit more. But anyway, this is heavy. Well, this is heavy too. So we'll get it all down there and get going. I pretty much use this brake every time there's any kind of load. It really just does help. Even though the Sky Mule has its own brake, but this grade is just so steep that I find it's not enough. I'm relying on the handles of these buckets to not break. The Sky Mule pad really does need to be out more, but that's for, it's not a concern for today. Down she goes. Just so that I don't have to make two trips, I'm going to carry the perma base down. It's a bit of a beast, but I'd rather just go down once and stay down there. So. Beautiful, beautiful sunny day over there. As you can see, we are in the shade. Brought the permabase cement board down, was not wanting to do two trips, but I'm gonna go back up and get that template. That's super easy and light to carry down. And at least I don't have to wheel the sky mule back up. But the curiosity is going to kill me if I don't figure out today if those window openings are going to work. So I just want to know before I leave here. So I'm going to rip up and grab that. And there's a little chipmunk that came right up to me and onto my hand at the base of the sky mule. So I'm going to take up some nuts for him. I don't see him. So I just left a little, little pile for him.
one. Two. Okay, here goes. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit too small. Uh, I think <laughs> I can work with it, I guess. Um, I might work on that today too. I'm really confused on what I want to work on now. I don't know if I should work on those windows or if I should start on this, maybe a little bit of both. Maybe I just get the permabase installed and I don't do any of the mortaring yet. I don't want to wait too long to do the mortaring because you don't want to do it in freezing temperatures, but um, oh, I think I'll start with this. This is what I came out for. So I'm going to get that started with the one board that I've got and that's a bit of a job to get that in. I need to do some reshaping of the wood and then we will tackle maybe one of the windows or something. I only have an inch and a half between here and the stove as it is. So my thought is that I need to take a little bit off of this two by four and this two by four. And then I'm gonna put a matching block of two by four in here so that I don't have to cut off of my window framing. And I think I gotta take the stove out of the way so that I can work efficiently to do that. Mm -hmm. How to do that. How do I get this out of here? Worst comes to worst, I can always add something underneath the legs. So it's okay if I make it too low a little bit, but not okay to have it too high. Kind of something like when you're making your rough openings for your windows, it's kind of okay to make them too big, not too small. Someone told me that once. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. No, dude. Hi. Hi, man. I gave you a whole bunch of nuts. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> You're so stinking cute. I'm gonna have to use this guy. I have earplugs somewhere, but I don't know where right now. Oh, that's not straight at all. The hell. opportunity for me to tell you about the sponsor of my video today and that is Blue Eddy. I brought my, I have the AC300 and B300 as many of you know I brought this out with me in the winter time and have used this power system almost every time I come out here and it has been my, I guess you could say like my main assistant for my projects out here and my entire build at this point. I'm pretty off-grid here I, uh, I have no cell service, I have no running water, I have no access to water. I'm even really quite far away from where I park my truck if like I got injured or if something happened. I'm pretty remote. Having a power station actually has 
given me a creature comfort that that I'm used to in life and it's given me just some general comfort and safety knowing that I have a way to charge all my stuff I have a way to charge keep my phone charged I have a way to keep all my batteries charged it's made my life easier I don't have to take things back and forth to charge I can run heat out here I can have lights while it's not the most portable power station it still is really versatile in that you can customize it to your needs. So if you wanna use this as a home battery backup in the event of a power outage, you can. It has 24 seven UPS home backup and one battery gives you 3,072 watt hours of power and then you can have up to four, which gives you 12,288 watt hours of power. So definitely enough to power your home and its appliances in the event of a power outage or if you want to power your little off-grid cabin. So you can kind of choose how you wanna use it. For the B300, a big lithium iron phosphate battery, these two systems, these two units require one another to operate. So the, the AC300 has all of your components in it. It's got a really large inverter, a 3000 watt inverter with a 6,000 watt surge. Pure sine wave, so clear, clean, consistent power. Outlets for charging, AC outlets. A lot of people don't like these covers, but if you're like me and you're working in construction and it's dusty, it's kind of nice to keep your ports clean. And it's just, yeah, you got RV outlet. You really can use this wherever you want. USB-A, USB-C chargers, cigarette outlet chargers. And then you've got some charging things on your B300 as well. Now solar, for me out here, isn't great. Summertime, it's okay. Right now, not so good. The reality of the location here is that it's dark. I get very little sun exposure other than in the summertime. So right now at this time of the year, it's dark. As you can see, the sun shines over there and we're in the shade. But I wanna set up the solar panels anyway because I don't often get a chance to set them up. I'm usually working out on this deck area and they just would be in my way. So. <clears throat> these are really easy to set up too. They have these little kickstands and once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. It took me a while to figure out. So I open once, kickstand, kickstand, kickstand the first two, the center two, and then you bring out these ones. Connecting the solar panel to the power station is really easy. It just comes with a cord zipped in. And it's basically plug and play. Your little solar input is here. This has two separate MPPT controllers with a 2400 watt solar input capability. So it has a large solar input capability, which is awesome. This can be charged in seven ways. You can charge it AC, solar, car, generator, lead acid battery, dual AC, and then AC and solar. Luetti is having a Prime Day sale, which is running from October 5th up until October 20th, where you can get up to $1,200 off. So be sure to check that out. Check out the links in my description. Thank you, Bluetti, for supporting my channel and sponsoring the video. in there this way oh. I almost wish I bought the uh smaller one of these. This one's a little bit big. Not good in tight spaces. No, I can't get it in there.
think, nice nesting material for the whole critters. Put this scrap here. It's like two and a quarter inches. So I made some pencil marks. trimming this or not. The stove isn't centered <laughs> to the back splash or to the surround. So if I trim it, maybe I will because that'll help it balance a bit better because it's already off. supposed to have a one inch gap between even the cement board and any combustible material. I had thought about just getting a few little washers, uh, nuts, sorry, nuts, to use as spacers, but I have so little space as it is that I'm not going to, and I think it's going to be okay. I've not done that in our cabin. I just put it up against the wall, the uh, dovetail logs, and it's been fine. The amount of times I'm going to use this stove not an issue. <laughs> it's about 20 after 4, 25 after 4. I don't feel like getting into the rock and mortar is feasible at this point. Um, these are the things that I got, two of these, for the base, for the structural aspect. Because I don't want legs, I, I want this all open underneath. So I uh, could work on this, I guess. So I'd have to add some stuff here. So this is the max height. I don't know what I'm doing for the base yet either. Probably just plywood, more cement board, and held up by these, two of these. Let me figure this out. I guess I haven't mentioned in case anyone's wondering. Yes, Steve had surgery on his knee. So that's why he can't help me with the windows anymore. He tore his meniscus. Probably the dam broke when we were in Hong Kong. And it's been bothering him a lot lately. And he didn't want to be held up when we go to the boat. So he got sort of in as a, I guess you could say a cancellation called the day before surgery. And he um, had it done in a different city. So he's no longer able to help me with the windows, which is why I've started on this. <sighs> like, there's just not many people that I know that are willing to take a day of their life to come out here and help me install windows. It's not only that the generosity factor, it's also somebody has to be pretty fit to kind of come down here and do this. And I just don't feel like asking someone. There's a couple of people that I could ask, but they're busy. And so if I don't get them installed before winter, what I would do is just tape up vapor barrier on both sides to give it the ultra thermal effect. <laughs> but it's not the end of the world. I just, obviously it would be way better to have them in for the winter if it doesn't happen. Oh well, I do the rest of the cabin and work around all of that. Okay, so we got, let's say I do half inch plywood, half inch plywood, half inch perma base, quarter inch for mortar, and like these rocks are all like vary in thicknesses, but is one inch. And that's probably the thickest, so let's go with that. One inch. So we have two and a quarter inches, and I think I'd even go just two and a half, give myself two and a half inches, because like I said, I can always add a little something or others underneath the legs of the wood stove to bring it up to the desired height. Can't have it the opposite. 
Don't contemplate, just do it. Because oh. this one is not accurate. is such a handy saw. <laughs> Couldn't recommend it enough, to be honest. This type of saw. This needs to be even less if that's going to go in between. So you have to... you. <laughs> I have to account for the thickness of this so that it sits flush. And I didn't do that. Back out there. I still think I'll have this under here. It's pretty good. So there's like a little bit of flex in this. I mean, I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but I was just thinking, I wonder if, if I take this board off, if I get another one of these and run it along underneath and then down here, that might help. Anyway, I'll think about that. I'll try and think of some ways to keep it so that I don't have legs. I really don't want legs coming down. Maybe some 45 angle braces or something. As for these windows, I just threw that up there again. And it's workable. I think the biggest issue on both sides is the top and it's not so much the height at the very top it's the it's that section right there. If there was more space there it would definitely fit because you can see there's space here. There is space there isn't much but it's uh, almost 530 and I think yeah for the for the windows I was gonna try and do that today but the tool that is going to be the most effective is going to be my chainsaw and I'm gonna use my little battery powered one for the job because it's just gonna be a bit safer and I think easier to use in this instance it might be it I might just clean up I mean, this is just silly little string lights just quickly tossed up, but lighting makes such a difference to a place. So I really look forward to being able to use the power station to power some really nice lights. I want to do a little chandelier with one of those old wheelbarrow wheels that I found. Electrical isn't something I'm really good at, so I'm going to keep it simple, but yeah, I want it to be really nice because it's kind of dark here so anyway that is gonna have to be it it's six o'clock so I'm just gonna pardon me finish cleaning up and then uh, I got here and drive home I mean, it's always the struggle for me is there's so much thought and energy and time just to get out here and then I get out here and I just have like ah hardly any time but I can't change that it is what it is I just have to be patient
I will see you in the next video. Thank you.